Hello everyone, my name is Skalti, and this is Timberborn. Timberborn is a post-apocalyptic colony building game by Mechanistry, where humans are no more and beavers are seizing their opportunity to rise to power. It is the player's responsibility to oversee the growth, and more importantly, the survival of the dam building, water enjoying species. There is some overlap in the gameplay of Timberborn and Satisfactory, and it's my goal to bring my creative yet efficient design style to this game and share that via this Let's Play series. So without further ado, let's jump right in, and I hope you enjoy. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, Timberborn, for those unfamiliar, is a colony builder, city builder type game. Uh, it takes place where essentially beavers now control the world. Uh, the world has been reclaimed by them, and there are, you know, um, nods to the fact that there was once civilization, uh, but no longer. Um, so to kind of just jump right into it, we're going to go ahead and start a new game. I'm on update four on the experimental branch as of recording this episode. Um, I'm a huge fan of folktales. I'm most comfortable with them as well. Um, and I kind of want to just have a nice chill. Let's play at least for this playthrough. Um, I would like to eventually explore with Iron Teeth. But I, I have a lot of uh, familiarity with folk tales, and with that, uh, I see opportunity to share some knowledge uh, with them. Uh, in terms of the map, um, Waterfalls is one that I find most dear. It's the one that I probably have the most time on. Um, and I know, you know, there's like that contemplation of, should I play something I haven't played before? So that way, the, the viewer experience is kind of the opportunity to like kind of live vicariously through that that wonder that first time experience but um i have a vision for this map um that i want to fulfill and i figured doing that in a let's play series would be nice so let's go ahead and start and we are going to play on normal um i could technically get away with playing on hard but the 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 wet season versus drought periods uh, i find quite annoying um and i find that that would just be a, a negative hindrance towards my experience right now um i would want to probably in the future mess around with the custom option and do something along the lines of keep the same type of drought system or maybe even increase the drought length um but then also increase the um the temperate the the rainy whatever you want to call it, season. So, uh, we'll just do Let's Play. I'll pause right away. And for those who have not yet played the game, just brief overview. Upper left is colony information, uh, population count, item count, etc. You know, water, logs, food, uh, ingredients that make food, and then also materials for structures, and then also science. Science is kind of like your gatekeeper behind technology. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. Upper right is kind of like your world gameplay overview. So we have like global overview. We have our cycle one, day one. This shows what the current uh, weather is. We have our game speed, working hours for the colony. And then we have some visibility toggles here for water. And then once we get storage, we can also toggle that as well. And then also layers. There is some verticality to the game. Bottom left, we have our log. So this is like, oh, beavers grew up, beavers died, why they died, etc. Um, and then above that, which we don't have anything now, it would be a list of kind of like, not critical errors, um, but important errors or problems that you'd want to solve for quickly. Down below here, we have our hot bar. Actually, it's not really a hot bar. There's currently no hot keys, which is, I know, a huge quality of life feature that people are wanting. But... Uh, this is essentially all of our buildables and terrain world manipulation, essentially. Um, so over on the left we have like cutting trees, planting crops, planting trees and bushes, demolish buildings, assign priorities, and then over on the right here, the right two thirds or three quarters, whatever, uh, is all of our buildables. And so kind of real quick before I get started building anything, I do want to kind of go through some stuff here and share some wisdom. If you're just starting out the game, look through all of this. Just kind of see what it does. Look at the little tool tips. So for example, metal platform, it's considered solid. Other buildings can be built on top of it. It's also only able to be built on the ground. It's four squares in height. Um, so these are 
really worth going through just to kind of get an idea like looking at the capacity here. So it's 120 versus 200 versus 30. Um, so this kind of helps you make some informed decisions. I think one of the quality of life features that is missing from here, uh, if I go under decoration, for example, and I look at Scarecrow. So you can see here in the green, it says aesthetics, Scarecrow up arrow within two tiles. So it's essentially it's an, uh, a well-being increase. Anything in green is well-being, uh, which I'll get into a second, in a second as well. Uh, but you can see the range it affects here is two tiles. Uh, but then if I go under like food, for example, and I go to the beehive, uh, this boosts the growth of nearby crops. Well, what's considered nearby? Well, it's three, three tiles in every direction, including diagonals, but they don't have it, that type of info, they don't have that radial area of effect information here, but they have it, you know, here, for example, uh, where, oh, here. So I think it's a little silly. Um, so there is some stuff that it couldn't be worth your effort, you know, going on to like the wiki and looking up some information as well. If you want to, you know, like I said, make some informed decision decisions, um, well-being real quick. So essentially this is kind of like an extracurricular, um, motivational component to the game where you can essentially increase the well-being of your colony. And as a result, you get uh, a handful of benefits. You get increased move speed, work speed, and lifespan. Uh, so essentially your beavers will live longer. Um, and so you can just kind of go through this and, and read through it. I won't go, to, go over it in detail right now, um, but we can. I, I will be addressing that at some point in the future. So let's go ahead and get started building some stuff. Uh, first and foremost, uh, when building, your beavers will build in the order in which they are placed unless you use the priority tool um, or you click on the item and you affect its priority as well. Uh, for right now, I'm going to just go ahead and put some pathing in here. I kind of already know what my objective is, if you will. Um, actually, I'll do this instead. Um, one thing that's really nice in update four that they changed is your district's center or district's area of influence, or essentially it's reach. Um, that's this outline here. <clears throat> so you can see it follows my pathway and it's 10 squares or 10 tiles, however you wanna look at it, 10 tiles from uh, the path that's connected to the district center. Prior to update four, there was a maximum range. I don't recall what it was. It was about, I think it was like maybe 75 to 100 tiles, um, which is not a lot, especially on a map that is this big, which I'll go over here in a second as well. Um, so one of the new updates is essentially one district center can now feed the entirety of the map but you still want to be conscientious of how you're kind of laying things out to make sure that there are some efficiencies so that way beavers aren't traveling for the majority of their day when trying to accomplish a task. Um, so we got our pathways in place, probably gonna build a couple more, but uh, we definitely are going to need some water and I will place those. I'm actually gonna place them, I'll place it over here. Normally I place them over here, but I kind of have an idea. Uh, that I want to exercise, um, get some more pathing. So let me go over to the map real quick too, actually. So we have our water source blocks over here. And that water travels using gravity essentially, um, or to an extent physics, and then it runs off the map over here. Um, the water can run off any side of the map. It doesn't matter. So this is just based on how the map is built. The natural water flow uh, ends here and it just flows off the side of the map. But you can see that we have like channels over here, for example, that come down. We also have a channel over here where water can run off the map over here, for example. So um, going over resources. So we have some living pine. We got some dead. I think this is pine as well. We got some dead oak. We got some blueberries. Uh, dead trees won't regrow. Piney trees can naturally spread. We have like little seedlings here. So if you are starting out the game, maybe you're trying to tackle hard for the first time. Uh, Min-maxing your resources, what I would recommend is cutting down all the dead trees first because they're not going to grow or spread or anything like that. And while you're busy cutting down the dead trees, it allows these saplings and other larger matured trees to have offshoots uh, just to increase your natural wood resource uh, with, before you unlock the ability to plant more trees. Um, over here we have our underground ruins. This is where you can gather metal. We also have one over on the opposite side of the map here. And then we also have just general ruins. And you can see 
you know, there's different heights and they all have different values, but essentially this is just a way to obtain scrap metal without building uh, a mine shaft or the ability to explore the mine shaft. Um, got some living oak up here and something you can see when I'm clicking on the resources, for example, is uh, it has the maturation and yield. So days to grow 30 and it will yield eight logs. Or if we click on something like pine, we have 12 days to grow, two logs when cut. So you can see this is a six to one ratio. If you break it down, divide each one by two. If you break this down by two, it's 15 to four. Um, but you can, I mean, technically break it down even more. So essentially you get more logs, but you have to wait longer uh, in terms of day comparison type situation. Um, but then also certain trees yield a second resource. So we can get pine resin. And this is essentially seven days after the 12 day maturity. So once the tree is matured, every seven days, if it's harvested, uh, it will yield two pine resin. And that can be, it shows you what you need in order to gather it as well. Um, and that's used for other various resources towards the mid-ish to late game period. Um, every time you start out playing, you get some food in your um, district center. Depending on your difficulty, that will be different. Uh, I believe also if you're playing on easy, it also includes water. Um, so we're playing on normal, so we just get a base amount, but then we also have some blueberries here. So I'm gonna do a couple of things real quick. I'm gonna put some gathering flags up. Actually, I'll just put up one for our blueberries. I'll stick it here, because I can reach everything. Uh, you can see its area of influence, much like clicking on a district center. Um, so that'll be able to harvest all these blueberries here. And then we'll go ahead and put some lumberjack flags up as well, right here to harvest all of this wood. And then uh, something else real quick on the map that you'll find every now and again are barriers. These are naturally occurring, essentially levees. They fully block water. It is possible to demolish it. And you can see that if we do demolish it, the water from here will spread into this little um, offshoot here. And then you can see kind of how we have this irrigated land. Uh, I think it's about, I'd guess 20 tiles based on like this distance here to over here, for example. Um, so it's about 20 tiles. Um, so if we bring the water in over here, we can turn this into some irrigated land and make them make a better use of our space overall. Um, and then, you know, one of the other components to this game, we are beavers, we like to build dams. So being able to stop up water in order to have some leftover for the drought periods is always beneficial. Um, so I'm going to put this right here. And now we can see because I just built that, I actually delete this, let's double check. So you can see my area of influence is just outside of the range for this little barrier here. So putting in that one square, I can now access this like so. Uh, and I'm going to demolish this. I'm gonna set the priority to high. I want this water to come in here and make the most of it. And then we'll do some more um, work with that later on. Okay, so we got our blueberry gathering flag in place. We also want to be able to store it. Uh, we want to make the most out of it because our gathering flag can only hold 20 blueberries. Um, I'm also going to position the storage near the gathering flag. Um, for right now, the worker who tends to the berries is also going to be the one to transport them into our storage. We also want to make sure that we're setting or specifying what is going to be stored. Uh, additional storage we'll need is for our water. So we can for right now, um, go ahead and just put two in front of here. Do the same thing, specify water for our storage, call that a day. And then last, but well, actually two more things. Um, the next one being, we want to uh, generate some science. We want to be able to learn, educate, unlock new tech. Um, so with that, I'll go ahead and just put two over here for now. And then you can see under the tile, we can set priorities. So the construction site will leave as normal in terms of the employment or the workplace. We'll set this to low priority, not lowest, but low. Um, so that way science is, is a nice to have. Um, it's better to supply the things that we need in order to sustain ourselves. So for example, we guaranteed want someone working the water pump. And then that other second thing that I wanted to get built are the farmhouses. So you can see the area of influence here is quite large. So we will go ahead and just place that. Go ahead and place it in the 
middle here. So, yeah, I'll just place it in the middle here. It's fine. And then once we get the water over here, we'll be able to capitalize on that and get some stuff growing. So for now, under plant crops, go ahead and just get, plant some carrots. Yeah, we'll plant a decent amount of carrots. Go back like this. Sorry, my OCD is like, or my like, I'm like feeling compelled to fill this gap, but I also like clean, clean tiling like this. Oh, what do I do? I'll just do this. It's fine. Uh, so we'll do that. And then we'll go ahead and do some sunflower seeds as well um, as a nice to have. And again, that, so kind of speaking to our well being under nutrition, uh, all the different foods that we can offer our colony. So being able to kind of diversify uh, a little early on wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, so with that, I think we're ready to go. One thing you can kind of do to give yourself a boost is increase the work account of your district center, and this will increase the amount of builders uh, that will quickly go around and get everything built up. Um, and then if we need to, we can always adjust. So kind of speaking to that a little bit too, you can see under the third bar here, this is two beavers have a job, zero vacancies, and then six are unemployed. So we're still paused, but now that we've un... Um, essentially unlocked two additional slots here. If I go and just play real quick, you can see that shifted over to four workers, four unemployed, uh, which will quickly change. So let's go ahead and kick it off. I'm gonna hit three on the keyboard, uh, one of the few hotkeys in, in the game. And that essentially is the highest game speed possible. So we can see our beavers are working away and then all of a sudden uh, they got the things built. And now here we got our first error, which was, I'm gonna call it intentional, uh, but it wasn't, I completely missed a step. Um, I'm also real quick gonna adjust the working hours to 18, just to get a little extra work per day, make the most uh, of the starting period. Uh, in order to cut down trees, you actually need to specify an area in which you want trees to be cut down. Uh, again, this is because if you look, for example, at the pine trees, if they just started nilly-willy cutting, cutting down everything, um, then it would kind of inhibit the opportunity to gather up like the pine resin or um, you know syrup from a maple tree, for example. So. Uh, we have our barrier destroyed, so we now have irrigated land, which will get built when we have enough wood. And our workers are just gonna wait until we get the, the lumber over here, get that all squared away. So one of the main reasons why I like the folktales is due to uh, their farming. Um, I mentioned earlier, under food, we have the beehive. This boosts the growth of nearby crops. So essentially it's a seven by seven area. So 49, however, it's minus one because you actually have space for the beehive, which was which would be placed in the middle. So the beehive, from my experience, uh, essentially uh, crops grow If it takes four days, for example, the beehive makes them grow in three. So essentially, it shaves off 25% of the growth time in order to produce, uh, which is really nice. So um, actually, I think we're prioritizing these next, which I don't want to do. Let's get this farmhouse built up uh, as quickly as possible over the science and get our crops growing. Um, the other thing that I want to do is I'm actually going to destroy this little blueberry bush right here so I can build a path. And then once all this stuff is built, my main goal is going to be building a dam. Just like that. And what this will allow... Whoops, no. I want to build a path. Um, one, it creates a bridge across the river, which is nice. Uh, we can't currently do that because we don't have wooden stairs, which helps us, you know, go up and down different uh, elevations. So building this to start would be nice because then it turns this whole body all the way over to here and including in here into a reservoir, essentially. Um, now, when we do get to droughts, there is an evaporation rate of water uh, and it doesn't depend on or the, the evaporation rate is constant regardless of the footprint of your water. So for example, the water will evaporate at the same rate this whole thing does as if I had a single square of water. Um, so 
a general rule of thumb general rule of thumb is you want to build deep not wide um, there's obviously a benefit to both but the typical rule of thumb is if you want to really conserve water oops i should actually re-switch my priority here so that we can actually start passively getting some science uh, once we're able. And I have a worker here. I think I might reduce our builders down, uh, increase our farm uh, employment so that way we can quickly get these planted. And you can kind of see how they're working. So they're building out based on the radius from the front door essentially that's kind of how that works um, so essentially the way the beavers are pathed is they'll take the shortest route to anything whatever that might be uh so now that all of our crops are grown here i'm actually going to just fully pause the farm we don't really need anything from them right now um, it's just kind of passively sitting there so rather than those three just sitting around doing nothing we can actually put two of them back into our district center to start building and I'm still building this, and I'm not sure why, because I, oh, I increased the workplace priority. That's why, okay. I've done that before, and I did it again. <laughs> um, so yeah, this way we can start getting some science. Our first unlock is going to be the Forester. And that'll enable us to plant trees under here, so the Forester. However, you can see Okay, so one, we need 60 science in order to uh, acquire it, or unlock it, rather. Two, we also have a new material that we need in order to build it, and those would be planks. So if we look at the icons here, uh, we can see that we need a lumber mill first, and this is our first one where you can see in the upper right, it shows 50 horsepower with a little um, lightning bolt to imply that it is a powered structure. And so we'll go ahead and just place that right here. And then what we can do actually for right now, um, yeah, we'll just go ahead and build a power wheel or a water wheel rather. The power wheels are nice uh, to keep work going through a drought period uh, because if there's no water flow, we obviously don't get any power. So um, looks like we are almost ready to cut down some more trees. So I will specify some more. I don't think they can reach all the way. They can reach some of these. Um, and I'll go ahead and actually just have them cut down all these now too as well. Uh, I think we got a few offshoots uh, in that duration. And then we also have this open space back here for further growth and development of our colony. Uh, we are currently trucking away at our science unlocks. We're at 36 points. Um, so one of the things that I really like about the map is um, the ability to create reservoirs pretty quickly or early. Um, for one, if we just block up three tiles or three um, squares here, we can essentially turn this whole piece here into a reservoir, uh, which is pretty simple overall. Um, the other opportunity we have too is to take all these waterfalls and kind of create reservoirs here. Uh, thankfully, we won't need to do that, especially, especially on normal. Um, Fun fact, on normal, the maximum drop period is nine days. And it takes nine days for uh, a full cube of water to evaporate. Just make sure we're good on food, 96 berries. Okay, I'm gonna keep an eye on this. This should be ready yeah, relatively soon. Um, so we won't really need to make a reservoir from here. And that one thing that I was mentioning that before we even started about, there's a vision I had for this, and that is essentially, we have 12 source blocks of water up here. Um, and my goal is to essentially take all of that water, create a reservoir up here, but then take all of that extra water and funnel it into a single channel and create a long line of power. Um, I did do a little bit of some experimentation on uh, essentially developer mode, if you will. Uh, to just kind of mess around and not have to worry about beavers building stuff and just kind of crank out uh, some some hypothesis studying, if you will. And I found a design that I really like and I want to uh, utilize that and kind of see, see what all I can do with that and just really make like a nice little pretty, a pretty uh, map, if you will. 
diorama uh, is pretty good for that. It's a nice small map, so it's pretty easy to quickly, um, you know, max that map out, if you will. So, um, looks like we're in good shape. I'm going to go ahead and pause real quick. Uh, look at our log count. So, logs are minimum. I'm going to have our builders build some more uh, lumberjacks over there so we can start gathering up some of these trees. Like I said, it's not imperative that we min-max, especially on normal, uh, when it comes to cutting down trees and whatnot. It's more so for uh, like hard mode, just based on the level of resources that you would need to save and also like, you know, utilize. Um, so we are pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and unpause this and get these harvesting. I am, let's see. It's gonna be a hot minute before we get that. I think most of these guys are kind of doing nothing, I think almost. I think that's the last one. Or a couple of them can reach, can reach over here technically. I'm gonna go ahead and actually leave that as is, but I'm going to pause these. And then see if I can't get these built. I'm not sure if I just prioritize it and do that. Um, in terms of pacing for this Let's Play, it's gonna be a little um, thorough at the start. And then as projects get a little bigger, if you will, um, we'll probably end up uh, doing some some cuts, if that makes sense, um, just for the sake of, of brevity. Um, yeah, I don't, definitely don't want to um, have like hour long episodes like my Satisfactory series, for example. So uh, I'm going to just preemptively get some pathing over here and kind of trap some of these resources. And then we get the pathing all the way over here. Um, so I'm essentially getting things ready to eventually turn that into a reservoir. Um, let's see. No available workers. That's okay. I'm fine with that. Doing good on food. Um, so I think next step. Um, let's see. Planks count. Where's our plank count? Eight. So I think we're good. Yeah, we're good for the forester. And I will for now. Position him. Where's a good spot? I'll actually put the trees over here. Do it like this. Or maybe we do a little bit of both, actually. Maybe we'll put the forester here. This is just like an overall decent spread of stuff. Um, we'll go ahead and go with pine trees for now. I would be a little conscientious about where I'm planting stuff. I think actually, you know what? We'll just do it like this. Go a little crazy. Um, cause this works out well too because there's already pine trees growing over here. Actually, you know what? switch this up a little bit. We're gonna do this. Let's see, if I do the Forester like this. Okay, perfect. So I'll do the Forester there and then I will reposition. Actually, I'm gonna leave it like that. Uh, the one thing I know I need to actually change real quick. I'm gonna remove that is under well-being we have a teeth grindstone. This took me forever to day to figure out. Um, eventually, you know, your, te your beavers will wear down their teeth and they won't be able to efficiently cut down trees. There's actually a risk of when they cut down a tree that you don't get anything, that the resource is just entirely lost. Um, the next step, I'm kind of looking at our science points and our employment um, and trying to consider some balance here. Uh, we don't need the lumber mill anymore, so that'll free someone up. Um, we have everything built that we kind of need built, so we can probably reduce this down. Maybe to one. Then we have one unemployed beaver. I'm gonna go ahead and build another science building. Or another inventor, rather. And I'm actually gonna prioritize this over the harvester. My, my thought here is we need to build housing. So essentially the way that the oak tails operate in terms of population control is based on your available um, sleeping quarters for your housing. So what we 
What I'm going to work toward is to quickly get 250 signs to unlock this triple lodge. It is the most efficient space-wise for housing. Um, and to just kind of do this right away is convenient. It's probably the way I'll, the way I'll explain it. Um, there's consideration, you know, like once the beavers start di to start to die, um, you know, you want to make sure that you have housing to start replenishing that population. For example, you can see like, this guy, his teeth were broken and now he's sharpening his teeth up so that way he can cut down trees. Which would be nice. Um, because we also are pretty compact, I'm gonna increase the working hours one more just to kind of get the most, like I said. It's a little overkill, like I said, you know, for normal, you don't really need to do that. Um, it's just kind of like a quality of life thing to kind of speed things along, if you will. Um, I'm also gonna go ahead and block this off. And the other thing that we can do now too is, you know, we have these trees and our foresters planting trees ever so slowly, um, which is fine. I'm not complaining too much. Um, also our beaver here is just chilling because there's no blueberries. So I want to pause him and let him acquire some science, get that up as quickly as possible. But we could always, you know, just build some more lumberjacks elsewhere on the map, like over here, for example, get some wood this way, uh, should we run out, which I think might be the case, especially if uh, we're going to try and clog that up over there somewhat soon. Um, one of the other nice features besides dams is you also have floodgates and these are essentially adjustable height um, structures. So this one, for example, the triple floodgate, like its name, um, essentially can block three squares high of water. Um, so that's actually perfect for what we need over here because this is three squares high. Uh, so essentially this will keep all of this nice and uh, full and we'll have guaranteed access to water and whatnot and we'll be smooth smooth sailing um let's see yeah i'm just gonna go ahead and let this play out until we get the science needed for our housing and uh get that built you know what? actually i stand corrected um, I just realized our beavers are sitting here doing nothing. We have all these trees here. And that's because I didn't build storage. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and put up. I'll do it this way. Um, we're actually... So we have our... Um, lumber mill down here making planks. Actually, no, no, yeah. I don't want to waste any greenery that we have. So I'll go ahead and position it here nice and close to our... Lumberjacks, and then we'll go ahead and get this built up so that way we can make the most out of gathering up the wood. Oh, and it's not connected to our district. There we go. Because one thing we can also do is just full on pause this and then unlock the lumber mill and uh, just get some more planks built up passively uh, for some additional use, if you will. But I definitely am going to be pulling the trigger on the housing the moment it's ready. Um, and then after probably the housing. You know, it's probably recommended to do the stairs to provide some uh, increased navigation options for our beavers as well, which would be nice. Also, it looks like we're maxing out on our carrots based on our population, so I think it's probably worth getting some storage in place for them as well. Um, so we'll actually run this do it like this. We'll do carrots, and then we'll do sunflower seeds. And for the most part, a lot of what I'm doing right now is definitely going to be temporary. Um, you know, this is going to turn into farmland. And then, like I said, this is going to become a full river through here. It's going to have like our power. We'll have like our industrial district over there and whatnot. So I have, I have a vision. We shall see it fulfilled. All right. So we have our housing. And how far off would be 
stairs, 70 science. I'm actually gonna wait a little bit more, um, kind of push the limits a little bit and for good reason. So one aspect that's really fun or not, one aspect to kind of game the system a little bit, like one of the well-being components is wet fur. And this can be accomplished in a handful of ways. I'm gonna pause real quick. So under well-being, we have showers. We have Lido's, which is essentially like a little like swimming area. Um, and then I think mud bath consi considers getting them wet for, I'm not 100% certain, but also so does traversing through water. You know, they're beavers. You don't have to build over the water. They can walk through it. Um, so to that point, if we unlock the wooden stairs, we can essentially enable um, our beavers to... I'm going to go ahead and pause since we're maxed out on planks right now. Um, our beavers can... If we position them in a way where they are guaranteed to go through water, aka go into their houses every night and leave them every morning, then if we build the houses in the water, and we can specifically do that with the triple lodge because the entrance to the house is on the second floor. Uh, so it's not considered a flooded building as a result. Same thing with the double lodge. And I know it's really deceiving because the thumbnails here show the entrance on the bay on the bottom floor. That's not the case. The entrance is actually on the second floor. So uh, something to be considered. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Um, we're almost to that science threshold. We actually just lost our first adult beaver. Uh, so this is kind of just in time Make sure we get this built as soon as possible to really just make the most out of everything. Um, there's no clean way to arrange the housing. I'm just trying to find like a... Yeah, we'll do it here. Why not? And then we'll just do stairs over on that side. Wait until we get some pathing in here for example, and then build a house one stop away. Do one on each side. Then we'll do stairs going up. And then we can go ahead and pause all of our science for now. Resume this one here. Uh, so that way we can get these built nice and quick. And we're pretty good on food, so I'm actually gonna reduce the beavers down to one here, make the most of it. Uh, most out of our workforce, for example. Because uh, everyone else is still going quite strong. We're actually accumulating logs quite heavily. I'll go ahead and actually unlock this because we're gonna need some more planks to build these other stairs here. Um, T, by the way, can toggle your water. And then uh, the other overlay that I mentioned is your inventory. So you can kind of live, see live carrots, uh, sunflower seeds, logs, water, etc. Um, so it's a nice way to quickly look at things. Um, and you can, so the toggle, T for toggle, water, and then tab is to toggle inventory. So, uh, just little pro tips for you guys, well not pro tips, just little tips for you guys to uh, be efficient. Um, so, I didn't, I completely missed this, but we heard a little bit of a noise. We heard an audio cue uh, two days ago at this point um, in letting us know that there is an upcoming drought. Um, so this is what the drought little thing is. We have half a day left before that kicks in, which I'm not worried about at all. Um, we have our houses built. And so you can see that it houses nine. It takes up a two by three square tile area. Uh, but then also you can see how it has the entrance on the second floor here. But then if we go under here, we can see that some have wet fur, not many, but once they all go into the housing for the night, that should trigger. And then we'll get a well-being uplift. So they're all kind of chilling. There we go, three, four. So we got well-being, well, we got a lot. We got well-being for the wet fur. And then we also received well-being for the um, shelter as well. In combination with the variety of foods so um, 
Now, granted, the less, like, depending on how long they're in the water for, so like, for this, for example, this guy has just been chilling in the water, so he's full up. This guy was probably in and out of the water, so his bar is not that full. But as long as it's higher than this little uh, bracket, that will indicate a plus one value for that beaver. And then all of the beaver colonies, or all the beavers in your colony get averaged out for your well-being. That's why it's 11 out of 14 gives you 0.8, for example. I think there's a little bit of rounding uh, in favor of the player when that happens. Um, so we now have no... I mean, technically shouldn't have power. It'll probably sell here in a moment. Um, so hopefully we can get our full... Now we have almost no horsepower. So let's go ahead and pause that. We don't need that. Uh, let's go ahead and resume our science centers. And we don't need... I guess we could hire someone here to cut down these trees and let that run. But I think we are in pretty good shape. Um, you know, we have three new beavers were born. So we have three child beavers, 11 adults, uh, and two more vacancies. So at this kind of where we're at with our food, our water gathering, um, and now that we already have this dam built in place, you can kind of see how it's dried out over here. Um, we're in pretty good shape. And so I think that's a nice little stopping point uh, as a first, you know, dive into the Let's Play. And uh, we will continue on and start working towards just expanding our colony uh, until the point where we can start actually working on some large scale projects like the like the water um, system over here, which will be, to be honest, a fair ways off. Um, but until then, you know, we'll just make the most out of what we can with this area and uh, go from there. All right, and that'll wrap up the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's not satisfactory, but I thought there was a decent amount of overlap where I could, it made, where it made sense to pursue this as an option and we'll see what happens. But it's something that I want to be doing right now. And uh, I still very much intend on producing content for satisfactory as well, hopping back and forth uh, to kind of keep things fresh and do what I can to kind of mitigate burnout. I know that's something I've been uh, suffering from lately. Um, so anyway, we'll leave it at that. If you guys enjoyed the video though, feel free to leave a like, it does help out the channel. If you want to see more content in the future, be sure to subscribe if you're not already. And if you have any questions about Timberborn or Satisfactory or anything in general like life, leave a comment below and I or someone else will get back to you as soon as we can. But with that, again, thank you so much for watching. Take care.